Hey, welcome back. This is module two, topic one, lesson four. We skipped lesson three. Um, sorry, I know you, I'm sure you're missing it. Today we're going to talk about um, solving some polynomial inequalities and how that looks and what it works like. All right. All right. So let's get to it. So on page 318, here is a situation. We have law enforcement and you can re represent its profit model with this function where profit is in thousands of dollars and it's a function over time. All right, so we're gonna look at that now. We're gonna graph that, all right? And today what we're gonna talk about is what, where in this profit model are, is the profit negative? Where are we losing money? That's what we're gonna talk about today. All right, kind of things like that. And it was easy to see when we had a straight line, but now we don't have straight lines. We have these quadratics, cortex, all these fun things. So, all right, if we talk about losing money, then losing money is anything that falls under the zero, right? All right, so if you look here, this part of the graph that's in this box is under the, under the zero. So what is that? Well, that is X is less than one. All right, so before our first year, well, that's actually 1.5, isn't it? Before our first year and a half, we are going to be losing money. And then look here, between years four and six, we're going to lose the money. So between years four and six, we're also going to be losing money. All right. And then last but not least, anything after year eight. So whenever X is greater than eight, we're going to be losing money because down here, this is where our function is negative. Okay, now I don't know why they have the, the graph there, but they do. This is where all our values are negative. All right, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. All right, let's get started. All right, now there are a few ways we can do this. Samson has a way, and what he does is he takes an equation. So we're going to solve this. 2x squared plus 14x minus 24. And what Samson did was he graphed y1 is negative 24 and he got a straight line at negative 24 then he graphed y y2 is 2x squared plus 14x and he graphed it right there and then he found the points where his graph were actually less than 24. great idea and he found that between negative 3 and negative 4 that's where they were under 24 so his interval is from negative 4 to negative three. All right. Now we also have to be careful in our original problem, what we're dealing with here. We are just less than, not less than or equal to, right? So that's a big difference. All right. On page 322, I'm just kind of going over these and we'll do more um, together. All right. This is Paco. And here's what Paco did. Paco set it equal to zero. So he added 24, and he got 2x squared plus 14x plus 24. He then found his zeros. All right, how do you find zeros? Well, you factor it, right? So he took a greatest common factor out, 2, and then he had x squared plus 7x plus 12. And then he found that was x plus 3 and x plus 4. So when x was negative 3 and when x was negative 4, that's how he found that. He found his zeros, all right? There's plenty of ways you can find your zeros. You can do it this way. You can also plug it into your calculator and find it. I think the calculator is a little bit slower. It might be better, might be safer, but sometimes factoring is a lot faster. All right, all right. <clears throat> let's take a look at another one here. Now, that's our, the, we're, those are our two main um, areas that we're gonna do them, all right? So let's go to page 324, all right? On page 324. All right, here's what I want you to do. Now, here's one thing you cannot do. All right, let's see if we want to factor this. So I'm going to subtract 18. Zero is less than or equal to 3x squared plus x minus 18. Are there numbers that multiply in it? No, this is not factorable. So I have to put this into my calculator, all right? So I just have to decide do I want to do it one of two ways. I can do y1 equals 18 or and y2 equals 3x squared plus x. And then I can see it that way. 
All right, maybe we'll, we're gonna do that. Let's do that. So I'm gonna pause the video and I want you to put that into Y1 and Y2. All right, so you can see we have our graph here. So now again, at 12, 16, so 18 would be right here. We have a line cross, that's 18. Okay, and then we have 3x squared plus x. All right, and you can see that graph was kind of in the middle there. Now this is just a sketch. This is not even a good sketch, but you should have gotten the same thing on your calculator, right? So now we want to find these two areas because it is less than, ooh, careful. Mm, we want to be very careful on this one, right? What does it say? We want to know when X is greater than. So we, we want to know when it's above this line. So we need to find these two points. Well, we know how to find those two points. Anytime we're going to calculate or on a graph, we have to calculate. So second calc. All right, I'm going to find my um, intersection, five. All right, I want to find my intersection of these two points. So make sure it's close to that intersection. Is that my first curve? Yes, I press enter. Is that my second curve? Yes, I press enter. Guess? Nope, there we go. So 2.29, we're going to say. 2.29. So let's make sure we draw that on the graph. And you can see how far off I was. 2.29 is our x value. The y value doesn't really matter. All right, we just want to know when our x values are going to be greater than. Okay, let's go back and find the other one. All right, second calc. I want to find the intersection, number five. All right, now I have to go over to the other intersection, though. You have to remember to do that. That's my first curve. That's my second curve. And guess, negative 2.62. So this one is negative 2.62. All right, and now we have to talk about the intervals, right? The intervals are whenever it's above. So for it to be above this, it's only when the graph goes to the right of this. So when x is greater than or equal to 2.29, y equal to, because that's what we started with, and over here, it's all these values to the left. So then x is less than or equal to negative 2.62. So those are our intervals where we have um, the situation that we're talking about. All right. All right. Let's go to the next page. All right. This is page, um, sorry, 325. All right. On page 325, let's try, let's try this one. Now, I'm going to do this one. I'm going to try and see if it factors first because I have four terms I'm going to do grouping. So here I can take a 2x squared out. And when I do that, I have x minus 4, right? And then I can, I'm going to take over here, I'm going to take a negative 8 out. And when I have that, I have x minus 4. So now I have x minus 4 and 2x squared minus 8. All right, well, that's the same thing as saying two times x squared minus four. It's a common factor. And this is a difference of squares, so that's x minus two and x plus two. So all of that has to be greater than zero. So let's plot our zero. So this zero is at four. One, two, three, four. This zero is at two. This zero is at negative two, all right? And this is not a zero because there's no x, so that doesn't matter, all right? But the a value doesn't matter, it's positive. And we know that third degrees, when they're positive, they increase as we go to the right. So I'm gonna look at it something like this. Again, that's just a sketch, all right? What we really care about are when are the x values for when it is greater than zero. So can we agree that it is greater than zero between this x value and this x value and from this x value forever? It's greater than zero here and greater than zero there, right? So let's write those out. What are our intervals? So that was from negative two is less than or equal to, ooh, not equal to this time, caught me. Negative 2 is less than x is less than positive 2. And also, x is greater than 4. Those are our intervals for when we have that situation. All right. Number letter B. All right, letter B. So I'm going um, 
going to factor this one. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take out a common factor. I'm going to take an x out, and I'm going to take a 3 out. So then I have a 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. All right, now, so I know I have 1x at 0, all right? I need to factor this. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 7. And I like the box method whenever I have a leading coefficient, all right? So I'm going to put my first term in the first box, my last term in the last box, and the two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 7. So negative 8x and 1x, because those multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 7. So I'm going to look here. There's nothing in common, so that's a 1. Here I can take a 2x out. Going up, I can take an x out, and I can take a 4 out here, and it's negative because that box is negative. So this will be x minus 4 and 2x plus 1. So again, I have a 0 at 0, I have a 0 at 4, and a 0 at negative 1 half. All right, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then negative 1 half, somewhere in here. And it's a cubic, much like the last one, so I'm going to do that again. All right, so now we have to analyze our graph. We want it when this stuff is greater than zero, so it's greater than zero here. So what is that? That's between negative one half and zero. And then it's greater right there, and that is gonna be when x is greater than four. Okay, all right. I want you to try um, letter C all by yourself. Go. So you can pause this and look at this if you need more time, but essentially I did x squared minus 9, x squared minus 4, difference of squares, x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 2, x plus 2. So I had negative 3, negative 2, 2, and 3, and what's to know where it's less than? So less than is 0 is here and here, so that's negative 3 to negative 2 and 2 to positive 3. All right, all right let's apply this now. Let's apply this knowledge you've gotten. So, on page 326, get your kicks as an indoor soccer complex. The roof's height of the facility is 80 feet. When a player kicks a soccer ball and it touches the ceiling, the player must sit out for two minutes. Michael kicks a ball straight up in uh, the air with an initial velocity of 70 feet. All right, so first of all, we have to look at this. They're, they're telling us vertical motion over here. So, let's come up with a situation. H of T equals negative 16 t squared plus v sub zero that means initial velocity anytime you have a sub zero that's initial velocity so our initial velocity was e right no that wasn't our initial velocity that's how the height tall the building is 73 thank you all right so now we um know that so now we have an equation so put that in y1 and in y2, we want it to equal 80, all right? So we're going to graph this, and we're going to graph 80, and we're going to see where it hits because we cannot let him hit the ceiling, all right? So pause that and put this in your calculator. If you need a good vin uh, window, you can pause and copy my window, but you should know how to do that by now. So here's our graph. All right, so we have this is 80, and we can see that when he kicks it, it's definitely going to meet here right so when is there our inequality going to hit that ceiling all right now this is tricky all right so let's let's solve it out let's find out where they intersect so i'm going to do second calc i'm going to do intersect number five all right, i'm going to go over to the one i want because that's where it hits the ceiling right enter enter all right and let's guess boom 1.83 so at t equals to 1.83 seconds that's when he is going to hit the ceiling so to determine whether or not michael must sit out yes he's going to have to sit out because it hits the ceiling at 1.83 seconds all right let's go to the next page number page 327 and let's do letter c all right so this is about a person with type 2 di diabetes, and they need to keep their level under 120, right? So 120 is, um, so oh, look at the first question. 
This is gonna be tricky. All right, so we're gonna put y1 in as 120 and y2 as our equation right here, which I am not gonna copy again. All right, and it says a span of 72 hours, so that should help you with your window, correct? All right, so pause video and put those values in for your calculator. All right, so here again is my window, uh, if you need it, all right? So here's our graph. I'm gonna pull this graph down here just so we can talk about it for a second. Um, so the first question asks, when is it gonna be greater than 120? So greater than 120 is here, right? Here and here. So we really need to find these points, right? So let's go in and find those points on our calculator, all right? Uh, I'll find the first one together and then you can find the other ones, okay? So again, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find out where they intersect. So I'm gonna do second calc. I'm gonna do intersect number five. All right, I'm gonna go all the way over. We'll start at the far end. All right, so first curve, second curve, inner. So 6.3, we'll say. And then, so remember, we have to move it over there. So you, I want you to find the other. So 6.3 is our first one. All right, so I found 6.3, 23.9, 45.2, and 59.9. Again, if you don't know how to find those intersections, you need to ask somebody in class, ask your teacher. All right, here we go. So when is it greater? So it's greater here. So all the x values less than 6.3. It's also greater here from 23.9 until 45.2. And it's also greater here, 59.9. That's where it's greater. That's where his blood sugar is higher than it wants him to be, all right? We need to keep it level underneath all right so then it says where what hours are they less than all right let's do that less than is here so from 6 3 um to 23.9 why am i not doing equals here because it doesn't say less than or equal to right it says less than 120 and 45.2 is less than x is less than 59.9 all right there we have it all right, so that's using what we have in uh, to our advantage. Okay, so your homework is going to be on page 329. I want you to do all of number one, please, and all of number two, and do the stretch problem. All right, do that stretch problem. Okay, you may want to do it with your calculator, but you can sketch it. All right, all that fun stuff. All right, best of luck. Make sure you ask questions, questions, questions. Later. Thank <laughs> you.